Hi, welcome to Yoga Heart Online. I'm Pauline and this is Dean. He's going to be modeling the, the asanas for us today. Um, we hope that by giving these classes to you online that you are able to either develop your own home practice or um, just get some fresh inspiration for your existing home practice. So we'll be using one yoga prop today and that is the yoga belt. And what I'd like you to do with your yoga belt, please, is make quite a fair size loop. Um, this can always be adjusted when we get to the first posture, but something that's more or less looking like this size would be great as a start. Okay, so I'm going to get out of the screen so you can hear me more clearly, and Dean is going to lie down on his mat. We are starting today's practice in Shavasana. So as you usually do whenever you come into your Shavasana, you want to lie yourself deliberately down onto the floor so that you have an awareness of left and right side feeling balanced and a lovely softening coming into the body. You are very welcome to close your eyes and as the eyes close, Start to become aware of your breathing. And as you become more and more aware of the natural breath, with each exhalation, just allow the body to sink down and soften. Using your exhale to help you release any tension from the physical body. Any tension from your mental or emotional bodies any busyness from your brain. Feel into the lovely release that can come when you just surrender and sink down to the earth. We're going to maintain the softness and the stillness within the body as we start to activate into our first posture. So all we're going to do to start is we're going to flex our feet. So we want the heels in line with the sitting bones, the feet apart, the toes pointing straight up so the feet are flexed and you're going to keep the center of the heel connected to the floor. Then you're going to tighten your kneecaps, activate in the quadriceps. Notice how there is firmness in the legs, but the rest of the body is still soft and relaxed. Starting to activate into the arms, you're going to bring the arms closer to the body and pull the fingertips very strongly towards the feet so that the shoulders move away from the ears, legs are still firm. And then press the shoulder heads down to the floor so that the chest lifts and expands. So you now find yourself in Supta Tadasana, which is your mountain pose, lying down on the floor. Just continue to breathe easily in and out of the nose. And then inhale, take the arms all the way up to the ceiling and all the way over to the floor so that the thumbs rest on the floor. If this is a difficult action for your shoulders, you may want to open your arms more towards a V shape rather than having the arms parallel. But if you can manage the parallel line, that's what we're after. Keep pushing forwards into the heels. Keep tightening the kneecaps. Press the legs down. Extend fully through the arms into the fingertips. And then try and soften the lower ribs down towards the floor a little. Take a deep inhale here. And as you exhale, bend your right knee towards your chest. Take hold of the right shin bone with the two hands. You're in Ekapada Pavanmuktasana. So we're keeping the firmness in the left leg. The heel is still on the floor. The left leg is still firm. But what I'd like you to do here is I'd like you to soften your right ankle and soften your right hip so that you allow the stretch to come. You're not creating resistance by having too much firmness within the right leg. And then we're going to go back to where we came from. So inhale the right leg forwards, arms above the head, stretch fully. 
Extend into your heels, reach into your fingertips, soften the lower ribs down. Take a deep inhale, and as you exhale, bend your left knee towards the chest. Take hold of your left shin bone. Keep the firmness in the right leg, but soften the left hip, soften the left ankle. And take easy breaths in and out of the nose. Now we're going to move between these three postures dynamically with our breathing. So as you inhale, extend your arms above the head, left leg forwards. As you exhale, bend right knee to chest. Inhale, right leg forwards, arms above head. Exhale, bend left knee to chest. You're holding the length. Keep going. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, right knee hugs in. Inhale, stretch it out. Exhale, left knee in. Keep going. I'd like you to do a few more. Just find your own rhythm so that you're moving with your breath. Inhaling to lengthen. Exhaling to hug the opposite knee in. Do one last one. And once you have completed, I'd like you to relax your arms beside your body and rest in the shape of Shavasana, where the toes and the thighs just flop out to the sides, the arms rest beside the body, and you just completely relax and soften. So notice how you feel after that little bit of movement, how the heart is beating. The next thing I'd like you to do is bring your legs together, but this time we're going to point the toes all the way forward so that we stretch into the front of the shins. And as we take our arms above our head again, this time the palms of the hands are going to be facing up so that the tops of the hands rest on the floor. Now stretch into your toes, stretch into your fingertips, soften the lower ribs down to the floor. Take a deep inhale, and as you exhale, bend both knees to the chest, taking hold of the shin bones with the hands. So you are in Dvipada Pavan Muktasana. Now if moving dynamically proves to be just a little bit too much on the body, you can repeat what we just did, doing the single leg action. If you're happy moving both legs together, we're about to start. You're going to inhale both legs forwards, arms above head. Exhale, bend knees into chest. And just keep moving with your breath. Inhale to lengthen. Exhale to hug it in. So finding your own rhythm so that the breathing and the movement feels quite smooth and easy. I'd like you to do three more. And whenever you have completed that third one, again you return to the shape of Shavasana. Let the legs flop out, let the arms soften. And again, just notice how you feel. A wonderful aspect of our yoga practice is that it allows us to reconnect with our body and our breath and get us out of our minds. So we begin our work with the strap. You're going to pick up your strap. I'd like you to begin with both knees bent. So you're going to place the double strap over the heel of the right foot. Extend the right leg straight up to the ceiling. So what you'll notice is that with this double strap, you've got two little loops there on either side of your leg. So you can hold these loops in different ways. You can slip your fingers into the loop so that they serve as two handles. You can thread your wrists through the loops and hold a little higher up the strap or you can just wrap your strap around the your hands around the double strap, which is just a little more comfortable in the finger knuckles um, than a single flat strap would be. So if you're really struggling with your, your lower back here, you can keep your left leg bent. But if all is well, you're going to extend your left leg forwards along the floor. So when we place the strap over the heel, 
the influence is a little bit more into the skeletal system than on the muscular system. So as you draw the strap down, feel how the femoral head, the head of the thigh bone, is securing nicely into the right hip socket. Take your attention to your left leg, which is the brain of the pose, and extend fully into the left heel, tighten the left kneecap, and roll your inner left thigh down towards the mat, pressing the back of the left thigh down. Take your awareness to your abdominal region, press the abdominals down to the floor, spread the abdominals to the side, soften the lower ribs down. Extend your right leg fully, relax your jaws, your lips, your tongue, and take easy breaths in and out of the nose. On your exhalation, you're going to bend your right knee and you're going to change legs. So begin with the right knee, bend the right foot on the floor. The left heel goes up into the strap. And again, just decide how you want to hold on to the strap, which way is most comfortable for your hands as well as the rest of the body. There is the option to keep the right knee bent if necessary, but if you can manage it, extend your right leg along the floor. Flex well into the right heel. You're going to tighten the right kneecap and press the back of the right thigh firmly down to the floor. So I'm going to step into the frame just to highlight something. Dean wants to be pushing just a little bit more firmly into the base of the right big toe so that he activates very well into his right leg. Okay, so opening up the backs of both legs, we're going to press the abdominals down, spread them towards the sides, soften the lower ribs down. And again, just take easy breaths in and out of the nose. On the exhalation, bend the left knee. You're going to take your right heel up into the strap again. Decide whether the left knee is going to remain bent or is, if it's going to extend along the floor. So we prepare for Pash for Supta Balangashtasana, where we take the right leg out to the side. So you're going to take all of the straps into the right hand and extend the left arm out to a 90 degree angle. Take an inhale to prepare, and on the exhalation, start opening the right leg towards the right-hand side. So as you are opening your right leg, I'd like you to try and anchor the left shoulder onto the floor, and turn your abdominals strongly from right to left. So Dean's just made a little adjustment because he ran out of space. He's got very long legs. So keep extending into both legs. Keep turning the abdominals right to left. Keep anchoring the left shoulder onto the floor and just again breathe easily in and out of the nose. Firm the abdominals in preparation to move and on the inhalation pull the right leg back up. Exhale, bend your right knee. You're going to change sides so the strap is going over the heel of the left foot. And again, decide whether the right knee is going to remain bent or extend along the floor. In preparation for your posh for action, meaning side action, you hold your straps in your left hand, right arm goes out 90 degrees. You take an inhale to prepare, and on the exhalation, you start opening the left leg towards the left. So as you are opening, try to turn the abdominals from left to right. Keep extending into both legs fully. Keep anchoring the right shoulder down onto the floor. And just observe your breathing as you work the actions of the pose. In preparation to move, grip your abdominals well. Inhale the left leg all the way back up. Exhale, bend your left knee, release. So we prepare for Parivrata, Supta Panakashtasana. Parivrata meaning twisting or revolving. 
So take the right heel up into the strap. Extend your left leg along the floor if possible. So you're going to take hold of the straps with your left hand for this one. Your right arm is going out to a 90 degree angle. I would like you to shift your outer right hip in the direction of your inner left heel. Good. Then take an inhale to prepare and exhale, cross the right leg over the body. Just 10 to 15 degrees is enough. At this stage of the pose, you have both sides of your sacrum connected to the floor. And if you feel that this gives you a better effect, you stay here. If you would like to go into a full rotation, you're going to roll into the outer edge of the left foot, the outer left hip, and take the right leg over the body and down towards the floor. Once again, shift the outer right hip in the direction of the inner left heel and try to lift the sternum towards the chin so the chest expands. Extend fully into the left heel. Feel into your own neck and decide whether you want to look straight up towards the ceiling or turn your gaze and look in the direction of the right fingertips. Again, easy breaths in and out of nose. Firm the abdominals, inhale the right leg all the way back up. Exhale, bend your right knee and release. Prepare for the opposite side. So you're going to take the left heel up into the strap. Extend the right leg along the floor. Take hold of your straps in your right hand. Your left arm is going out to a 90 degree angle. Take an inhale to prepare. Exhale, cross your left leg over the body. 10 to 15 degrees is enough. Feel that the back of the sacrum is connecting to the floor. Try and shift the outer left hip towards the inner right heel. And again, it's up to you whether you'd like to stay here or whether you'd like to take the left leg over the body. So you roll onto the outer right foot, outer right hip, and take the left foot down towards the floor. Keep activating through the right heel. See if it's possible to shift the outer left hip in the direction of the inner right heel. Lift the sternum towards the chin. You may turn your gaze and look over the left arm towards the left fingertips if that feels okay on your neck. And then in preparation to come up, grip the abdominals. Inhale your left leg all the way back up to the ceiling. Exhale, bend your left knee and release the strap off your foot. Place the strap to one side of your mat, completely out of your way. And draw both knees in towards the chest for Dvipada Pavan Muktasana, where you hold your shin bones. And the idea here is to elongate the back body onto the floor. So feel that you are lengthening from your crown of your head towards your tailbone bringing as much of the back body onto the floor as possible. Release your feet onto the mat. Raise the right arm above the head. Roll over onto your right hand side and carefully come onto your hands and your knees. So we prepare for Adamukha Virasana, commonly called the extended child's pose in many other styles of yoga. We are going to part the knees the width of the mat, big toes touch, and you take your sitting bones as close to the heels as you possibly can. Keep the sitting bones down and walk your hands as far forwards as possible. Spread your fingers wide apart. Connect the finger knuckles firmly to the mat. Straighten the arms. You are pushing your hands forwards and pulling your outer hips back to create as much length through the spine as possible. Take the abdominals towards the back body. Now, feeling that you're charging your hands well, you're pressing firmly through the finger knuckles, through the base of the palms, through the pad beneath the fingers. You're rolling your biceps up to the ceiling, triceps down to the floor. In preparation for Adamukha Svanasana, your downward facing dog, you're going to inhale, lift your hips up, exhale, curl your toes under, and take the knees off the mat, lifting the sitting bones high into the air and straightening the legs. Keep the eyes open, allow the eyes to settle on one dristi point so that you're not looking around. Feel into your body, feel into your breath. You're going to walk or step the feet towards your hands. You can keep your feet hip width apart. Bring your hands onto your waist, tuck the elbows in 
and inhale, rise up with a flat back. Exhale, release your hands down. I'd like you to turn to face the long end of your mat. Stand in the center in your Tadasana, your mountain pose. So moving towards Trikonasana and Ardha Chandrasana, our triangle pose and our half moon, I want us to take a lot of attention to the area of the pelvis. So not only are you lifting your kneecaps up and activating your quadriceps, but you are paying a lot of attention to the action of the pubic bone lifting up, the upper buttocks there shifting down, and the abdomen moving to the back body. Bring your middle fingers to meet and step or jump your feet wide apart for Uttita Hastapadasana, where the ankles are underneath the wrists. So as you let, look straight forwards, your kneecaps are pulling up, your pubic bone is lifting, your upper buttocks flesh is shifting down, and your abdomen is coming to the back body. Now revolve your entire right leg 90 degrees and turn the left big toe in. So you're going to take an inhale to prepare and exhale, reach to the right, bring the right hand down and the left arm straight up. So once you find yourself in your triangle pose, feel once again, am I lifting my pubic bone towards my head? Am I shifting my upper buttocks flesh towards my left heel? Maintain that action. Turn your abdominals towards the left. Turn your right side ribs forwards, left side ribs back. And try and maintain these actions as you bring your left hand onto your left waist. So move the left shoulder head back more and more. Now you're going to look down towards the floor without losing that turning. Then you're going to bend your right knee. You're going to move your right hand forwards, keeping it on the baby toe side of the right foot. If necessary, step the left foot in a little closer. So your right hand should be more or less 20 centimeters in front of the right toes. And then you're going to straighten the right leg. And as the right leg straightens, the left leg lifts off the floor. Now take the left side ribs up to the ceiling and extend the left arm all the way up into the air. Feel once again that you are moving your pubic bone towards your sternum, your upper buttocks flesh towards your left heel. So that you don't start arching into the lower back. You are maintaining the firmness within the abdominal region, the firmness in the body. Going back to where you came from, you're going to bend your right knee, take a big step back with the left foot, and find your triangle pose again, right hand down, left arm up. Turn the ribs, right side ribs forwards, left side ribs back. Now on your inhalation, pull your body up to standing, turn the toes forwards, lift pubic bone up, upper buttocks flesh down, abdomen to back body. Turn the left leg 90 degrees, right big toe in. Take an inhale to prepare, Exhale, reach to the left, bring the left hand down, the right arm straight up. As you start to explore your Uttita Trikonasana, your triangle pose, feel once again your pubic bone lifting towards your sternum, your upper buttocks flesh shifting towards your right heel, your abdomen moving towards your back body. Turn your ribs, left side ribs forwards, right side ribs back. Maintain this turning as you bring your right hand to your right waist. Take the right shoulder head well back. Look down to the floor. Bend your left knee, walk your left hand forwards, step the right foot in a little more if you need to, straighten the right leg in order to lift the, sorry, straighten the left leg in order to lift the right leg off the floor. Keep turning the ribs and extend the left arm straight up to the ceiling. Once again, check in with the action of the pubic bone. Have your pubic bone moving towards your head, your upper buttocks flesh moving towards your right heel. Keep turning left side ribs forwards, right side ribs back. Now back to where you came from. Bend your left knee. Big step back with right foot. Left hand down, right arm up. You are in your triangle pose. Udita Trikonasana. On your inhalation, pull your body back up. Exhale the toes forwards. And lightly step or jump the feet together. Tadasana, mountain pose. Bring your hands to your waist, tucking your elbows in, and lightly step or jump the feet wide apart in preparation for Prasarita Parottanasana. So the outer edges of the feet should be parallel with the outer edges of the mat. You're going to tuck your elbows in, inhale, lift sternum and chin, exhale, fold from the hips, and bring the hands down onto the floor. On your inhale, lift your chin, lengthen through your spine, exhale, soften the chest towards the thighs, and release the crown of the head down to the floor. 
So your elbows are bending, you're tucking your elbows in so that your wrists, elbows and shoulders are more or less in two parallel lines. Lift the shoulders well away from the floor. Lift the kneecaps, lift the quadriceps, roll your frontal thighs towards each other in a thighs back. Now if you do not have a sheer shasana, a headstand in your practice, you're going to stay in the shape. So make sure that you're not overworking the pose, you are able to stay here for a while. If you are going to practice your Shia Shasana today, I'd like you to walk your hands forwards, elongate through the spine, heel toe in once or twice, bring the hands to the waist, tuck elbows in, and inhale, rise up. Lightly step or jump feet together. So in preparation for Shia Shasana, we're going to come onto the knees. We're going to interlock our fingers and take the crown of the head down onto the floor. The back of the head will be resting in the palms of the hands. Please feel free to use a wall to assist you. Um, you don't necessarily need to do a freestanding headstand. Dean's very versed in this, in this posture, so he's very comfortable doing it in the center of the room. So we're going to lift the knees off the mat and walk the feet in towards the face. And then just slowly, slowly find your inversion in a way that feels safe and comfortable for you. Once you're in your posture, feel that you're pressing your forearms down, wrists firmly down, and you're lifting your shoulders very strongly away from the floor. So the upper arms are also lifting away from the forearms. And think about that action that we've explored today in our mountain pose, in our triangle, in our half moon. You want to take your pubic bone towards your head your upper buttocks flesh towards your heels and you want to take your abdominals towards the back body so that you are supporting your spine strongly. You're not starting to hammock and go into a, a back bend, which a lot of us do. Also take your consideration to your frontal lower ribs, contain them to the back body. Make sure that your shoulders are no longer dropping, they're still lifting up. You're extending fully into the inner leg. If you would like to maintain your headstand for longer, feel free to do so. But for the purpose of this, this clip, we're going to slowly release down. And once we are out of our pose, whether it was our headstand or our Prasadita Paratanasana, we move into Adamukha Virasana, where the knees are apart, big toes are together, sitting bones to heels, and arms extended fully. So if you were at the wall and you decided to fold up your mat, just get everything back in place so that you can continue with your practice. Adomukhashvanasana. On your inhalation, lift your hips up. On your exhalation, take the knees off the mat. Stretch out. Downward facing dog. Please make sure that you're not carrying any tension in the neck. We're using this as a release for the neck after our shear shasana, after our head snap. Now on your exhalation, gently release your knees onto the mat and come to sit. We're going to do a variation of Navasana, our boat pose, with the belt. So you need to play with your belt a little bit. It needs to be quite large, especially if you have long legs like Dean. So he is going to open his belt up, make it a little bit wider, and he's going to sit on his buttocks with his knees bent in front of him, feet on the floor. So he's going to place the strap over his head and his shoulders so that the strap rests just beneath the armpit area. And then he's going to place the heels of his feet into the strap. Have the buckle about halfway between your trunk and your heels with the long end of the strap pointing towards you because that will make it nice and easy to adjust if necessary. So can he, he can support his hands on the floor just to assist him into the pose. He's going to lift his heels off the mat, extend the legs fully. So in this moment, you might feel that you need to either make the strap wider or tighten it to make it shorter. So the strap is really assisting you in holding your pose. Make sure that you're not neglecting the abdominal region. Take the abdomen to the back body. And then if possible, you're going to extend your arms forwards in front of you so that the palms of the hands face each other and the arms are parallel to each other. Look straight forwards. Relax jaws and tongue. 
follow your breathing and enjoy the fact that you're being held in for what for some of us is quite a challenging posture to hold. Release yourself out of the strap. So you hold onto your strap with your hands. You bend your knees carefully. Take the strap off the feet first, then off over the head. Place the strap over to one side. We're going to do it classically now without the assistance of the belt. We'll start in a bent knee position so that we can discuss variations. So the first thing that you're going to do is you're going to hold onto the backs of the thighs. You're going to tiptoe your feet towards the body and then see if it's possible to balance with the feet floating off the mat. Maybe you can progress to having the shin bones parallel to the floor. Maybe you'd like to open your arms now, if you know that it's difficult to straighten your legs. Maybe you would like to extend your legs. In our Paripurnavasana, full boat pose, we want to have our toes above the crown of the head. Good. Now gently release the feet onto the mat. Do a cross-legged position, Svastikasana, across your shin bones. Press the hands into the floor, lift and open the chest, and fold forwards. Adho Svastikasana. Relax your head down. Walk the hands back towards the body, be upright, change the cross of the legs. Place the fingertips into the floor, lift the chest. And again on the exhalation, fold forwards, inching the hands forwards along the floor, softening the head down, softening the hips, softening the groins. It's taking easy breaths. So walk your hands back towards your shin bones that you're sitting upright. You're going to uncross your legs, have your knees bent in front of you. Make, enough sure, make sure that you have enough space behind you to recline with your head on your sticky mat and lie down on your back. Knees are still bent. So we practice Prasarita Padottanasana. No, we don't. We practice um, Prasarita Padasana 90 degrees, Urva Prasarita Padasana. So you're going to have your hands beside your hips. Palms of the hands facing down. If you feel that you need lumbar support here, you're very welcome to place the hands underneath the buttocks. So you're going to begin the pose by extending your legs forwards. Take an inhale to prepare. And on the exhalation, bend your knees towards your chest. Your hands are still either underneath your buttocks or beside your hips. So as you hold this preparatory pose, I want you to think about lengthening your spine, so elongating the tailbone away from the crown of the head, lengthening the lower back, and pressing the abdominals firmly down. You want to try and maintain these actions. Take a deep inhale. Exhale, extend your legs up 90 degrees. Now you're going to take an inhale here, and exhale, lower your legs to a 45 degree angle. Inhale here. Exhale, legs down to a 30 degree angle. Inhale here. Exhale, back up to your 45 degree angle. Take an inhale here. Exhale, back to 90 degrees. Deep inhale. Exhale, bend the knees to the chest. Rest the feet on the floor. Extend the legs forwards. We're going to repeat that one more time. Decide whether you would like your feet, your hands where they are or whether you'd prefer to practice them beside the hips. Take an inhale to prepare. Exhale, bend knees to chest. Remember your lower back long, your tailbone elongating forwards. Inhale to prepare. Exhale, legs up 90 degrees. Inhale here. Exhale to 45. Inhale. Exhale to 30. Inhale. Exhale to 45. Inhale, exhale to 90. Inhale, exhale, bend knees to chest. And give yourself a hug by holding the shin bones with the two hands. Release the feet onto the floor. And open the arms out to 90 degrees. And again, I'm going to step into the frame just to highlight something because I've observed in the classes that I teach the following instruction is often very hard for students to comprehend. So what you want to be doing is you want to be shifting your hips towards the left-hand side of your mat. 
So you're going to lift your pelvis up slightly, swing your hips to the left, and then land the pelvis onto the floor. Maintain the pelvis there. So you lie down at this moment in a quite a skew angle. Draw your knees up towards your chest. Take an inhale to prepare. And on your exhalation, you're squeezing your knees as close to the right armpit as they can go. So this is Jantara Parigatanasana. And the reason that we move our hips towards the left in the beginning is so that now in our final stage, our spine is quite long. There's not too much rounding or compression between the two vertebrae. So in preparation to come up, Dean is going to firm his abdominals. He's going to bring his knees towards his chest. He's going to take his feet down. Just get the body in a straight line again. And then in preparation for the other side, you're going to lift the pelvis up, swing the hips to the right, place the pelvis down. So you're feeling quite skewed at this moment. Draw the knees in and then squeeze your knees as close to the left armpit as they can possibly go. Try your very best to release your right shoulder down onto the floor. Maintain an easy flow of breath. Grip your abdominals strongly. Bring your knees up towards the chest and then take the feet to the floor. Get your body in a straight line. Now, if you're quite strong in your practice, you're going to do this pose with straight legs. If you have any weakness or weak abdominals or weak back, I prefer you to practice it again with your knees bent. So as before, you lift your hips, you swing your hips to the left, you land the pelvis down. You have the choice of bringing the knees in towards the chest or extending the legs straight up to the ceiling. On your exhale, you're going to take either your right, your knees to your right armpit or your toes towards your right hand. Try and ease the left shoulder down onto the floor. Grip the abdominals strongly. Bring the legs back up. Release the feet onto the floor. Get the body in a straight line. And again, lift the hips up. Swing the hips to the right. Land the pelvis down. You have again the choice of drawing the knees into the chest or straightening the legs up to the ceiling. Knees to left armpit or toes towards left fingertips. Ground your right shoulder down onto the floor if possible. Maintain an easy flow of breath. In preparation to lift up, grip the abdominals strongly. Bring the legs back up. Feet to the floor. Get your body into a straight line. So we move into Chatush Padasana, which is our bridge pose, and we're going to practice this with the assistance of our strap. So find your strap and place the strap over the front of the ankles. So your feet are hip width apart and you're holding onto the strap as close to the ankles as possible. So if there is any knee pain when you lift up or any pain in the back, all you need to do is give yourself more space and this is done by sliding the, the feet, sorry, the feet forwards or sliding the hands down the strap towards the feet. So just get into your optimal position to start. So holding onto the strap, take a deep inhale, exhale, push down through the feet and lift the pelvis up into the air. So by holding onto the strap, we give ourselves the opportunity to come a little higher up onto the shoulder heads. So roll your upper arms out one at a time. Come a little higher up onto the shoulder heads, feel the shoulder blades squeezing together and keep lifting the hips up towards the ceiling. Softly release down. Have a little rest. We're going to do it one more time. So whether you need to work with the strap or whether you can hold classically the hands onto the ankles all depends on your proportions as well as your back bending capability. So if you can quite comfortable hold the ankles without the assistance of the strap, feel free to practice in this way. Don't negate the, the help that the strap can give you. If you felt very well supported with the strap, use it again. So take an inhale to prepare. Exhale, push down through the feet, lift the pelvis up. Once again, roll the upper arms out one at a time. Come as high up onto the shoulder heads as you can. Lift your pelvis well. And on your exhalation, softly release out of the pose. 
So to end off our practice, we are going to go into a neck release, which brings a lovely sense of quiet into the body. So begin by making your strap loop as wide as it can be. You can always adjust it once you're in. So we begin by placing the strap loop over the balls of the feet. Your head is going to lift off the floor and you're going to place the strap loop, loop underneath the skull and have the strap just above your ears. So you can tighten the strap if you feel that you would like it a little bit tighter. Have the arms resting beside you with the palms of the hands facing up. Make sure that you are perfectly comfortable in the shape. It should feel very relaxing. It shouldn't feel like it's causing any tension to the neck. Allow the eyes to close. And just feel the weight of your skull sinking into the strap. Feel the brain becoming quieter. Feel the weight of the arms sinking down to the floor, the weight of the shoulders sinking down to the floor, releasing all tension out of the neck, out of the upper trapezius muscles, which are situated between the neck and the shoulders. They can hold a lot of tension when we are feeling stressed or anxious. Notice the softness in the tummy. Just allow the abdominal area to soften. Allow your breath to flow. Relax jaws, lips, tongue. Relax facial muscles. So if you feel that you would like to stay in the strap a little bit longer, feel free to do so. But for the purpose of this clip that we are doing, we're going to bring our hands to our strap. We're going to bend our knees and just carefully release the head out first, head to the floor, and then take the strap off the feet. Make your preparations for Shavasana, extending one leg forwards, then the other. Let your whole body sink down. Dean is choosing to place his strap over his eyes. The room that we are filming in currently is quite bright from the afternoon light. So whenever we place something over the eyes for Shavasana, it assists in quietening the mind. Sometimes when the mind is very busy or if there's a lot of nervous tension within the body, the eyelids tend to flicker a lot when we practice our Shavasana. So by placing the strap over the eyes, the eyelids can be quietened. Another nice prop to use if you have one is uh, an eye bag, which is like a little bean bag. You can even just fold your shirt and place an article of clothing over your eyes as long as it doesn't block the nostrils. And I'll just enjoy the quietness. Let go of the effort of your practice.
And again, if you feel that you would like to stay in your Shavasana for longer, feel free to do it. This is your practice. You want to give yourself sufficient rest. For the purpose of this clip, we are going to start releasing. So you're going to start moving fingers and toes. Bend your knees up to the ceiling. Raise the right arm above the head. Roll over to your right hand side. And just carefully come up to sit. Taking a cross legged position. Bring your hands to prayer, eyes closed. a moment to express gratitude in your own personal way. And today I'd like to express gratitude to Dean, husband, my partner in life, my yoga model, for all his assistance and everything that he does in order to create yoga heart. At home, for our students, Exhale, bow the head to the heart. And the inhalation, raise the head. 